right, guys, so my portion of what's in my pack, I'm gonna kind of show you what we do for mountain bike hunting. Now, this is a, this is a style of hunting that we used to do a long time ago, um, just because due to a lot of road closures and a lot of different rules and regulations, uh, the biking thing just hasn't, hasn't fit into our hunting as much anymore, but still definitely uh, could for a lot of people. And so this bear hunting, like if you watch any of our bear, our bear videos, we did a lot of uh, stuff off bikes in our bear videos. And it's, it's a great way to hunt. It's especially like if you can't access it by foot, you'd be shocked how much more miles, how much more ground you can cover with a mountain bike. So to dive in, obviously check your rules and regulations before you just go get a mountain bike and just go behind any gate. But a lot of private timber companies around Oregon where we live, if the fire danger isn't too high, they will let you actually foot access, which mountain bikes are game, game player then. So anyway, let's just kind of break it down. These are Bakku bikes. Uh, the great people at Bakku sent us these bikes and they are amazing. These are electric bikes. This is, uh, this is, it can, you can program it for whatever. You can go 750 or you can do a thousand <clears throat> watts. It, it, um, it's pretty simple. I mean, it's, it's very, very user-friendly, very easy. Uh, this bike comes with a lot of different things that I actually have in the shop right now. Comes with a back, uh, backboard back here, and you can put panniers on both sides. Um, I just don't have it on my bike right now just because I've been training on this bike. So for getting in shape for season. What I mean by that is you have, it's not always pedal assist. You can do whatever you want. You can just put this bike in just regular mode and ride it just like a regular mountain bike and it works just fine. And that's what I've been doing for, you know, just training my legs, getting ready for season and stuff. So uh, one thing I did add to the whole thing is just a simple carrying case, which if something goes wrong, I haven't yet happened, but I have in this little thing, a thing, see these links of chain, if my chain breaks, because these bikes have so much torque on them. That's what a lot of people, I think, it's a, it's a big thing that people don't realize is when you're shifting gears and you're in a higher speed, there's so much torque on that chain. And uh, I went to the bike shop the other day and said, hey, are these chains, is this like a legit, you know? And he says, that's like the toughest chain that they make. It's just, there's so much torque there when actually it gets pressure put to the, to the, to the back wheel that you can actually break a chain. I haven't yet, but, and I've got what? I've got almost 300 miles on this bike, but that's 300 miles on the computer that it says. So a lot of times when I'm training and stuff, I won't have it in, I won't even have the computer on. So it has a lot more miles on it than that. And it's still, it's still working really good. Um, okay, so uh, you probably are asking, this is a what's in my pack video and all you're doing is showing me the bike, but I, we're getting there, we're getting there. So this thing, uh, Back you sent this to me and I looked at it and I thought, I'm gonna never use that. After my first trip on bear hunting, it was uh, after a rainstorm. I had mud all over my pack, all over everything. Yeah, it is a godsend. There's a reason that they have these things. It's just a giant, all it is is a giant dry bag is all it is. And you could take and hose that down. My pack is inside it obviously right now. Take and hose it down and um, it works it works amazing and i can see it working like for elk season as well because you're not dealing with the rain as much but you're dealing with dust a lot and if anybody knows how you get your pack all dusty and the straps all they're you know stiffen up and everything it's 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 a giant pain so anyway dry bag definitely definitely a cool thing to have so what I would normally have is bungees. There is some things on this video that, that you're gonna see that I don't really have right now on me, uh, which is bungees to bungee all this stuff down. So when I have meat and stuff on the way out, hopefully, um, anyway, bungee and all that stuff down so it stays kind of configured on there and, and not moving around. So anyway, I don't have those right now. Just imagine they're on there, I guess. So let's get to the pack. Another thing about the carts, guys. Um, Kid carts, as in a lot of our early shows, a lot of our uh, DVDs, a lot of the first things that we did, we used kid carts. They work just fine. Um, these trailers are pretty affordable. They're not that much money and work really, really well. So I would definitely um, say this is the way to go rather than a kid cart. It'll hold a lot more weight than a kid cart will, but uh, we've used pretty much everything. So don't let something be a, a hold back if, uh, if you can't. If you say, well, I don't have that cool trailer, you know, I, 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 I can't do this. Well, that's just a thing that's a barrier that's blocking you from actually going out and doing something. So get, get whatever works, regular mountain bikes. I got mine in there and I've been riding it too. Um, regular mountain bikes work just fine. We used them for years 
And even if you have to push them, you'll notice on a lot of our early DVDs, we pushed our bikes a lot. You can ride downhill. So it's, it's still saving you the time. And believe me, you can cover a lot of ground with a mountain bike. So let's dig into the pack. What's in Trent's pack? Been a question for a long time. <laughs> no, um, I, I, I pack different pretty much every single year. This year I'm gonna do things a little bit different with my food and stuff like that. But other than that, I, I'm gonna pretty much pack the same way as I have in the past. There's certain, certain things that I don't have in here right now that I just didn't have readily available, but I'll tell you what, you know, what I don't have. Um, okay, right off the bat, we got trekking poles. Super useful. We, I never used to carry them at all until I used them. And for pack outs, heavy loads and stuff, these things are awesome. When I'm shooter and stuff, I don't ever use them. I just have them strapped to my pack. But um, for for everything else, they are, they are a godsend, honestly. They make a ton of different kinds. And anyway, all different price ranges, just use what you can afford. Uh, it's, it's, these are, yeah, they're, they're nice. Even if it's two, even if it's two sticks, it works out jacket so this is what i use i use just a puffy a simple puffy coat super super lightweight uh, the one that i have normally this is a newer one it's just haggard and shot i usually don't like hoods i don't wear hoods but they don't make it without a hood anymore so i might have to go back to the old school nasty fied one and uh, bring that out i think it probably smells pretty bad but anyway uh puffy and then i'll have just a regular t-shirt on um, and I'll show you that. I'll show you that later. Just a, a camo wick 150 t-shirt. Okay. Diving in right off the bat on the very bottom of my pack. I carry a butt pad is what we call it pretty much. And this is going to be used for any time that we sit down, anytime that we come to a spot where it's okay, let's eat, let's have a bite to eat, or we're waiting on a bull, waiting for him to move off or bed down, something that in major, uh, pull out the butt pad. It's nice, a lot of times there's downpours, you know, in that higher elevation and the ground will be all wet. It's just a nice little pad to sit on when you're, the, the, the tiny comforts you'll learn when you're out there, the tiny comforts actually make a big difference. So butt pad, I just have it on the bottom of my pack. That's one of the things, little comfort things. Don't have to have it, but that's what I've got. So the way I pack my pack is when I go in, I'm going to pack it just for like every single day and the night that I'm staying there. So on the very top of my pack, this is all my food. So, and again, this is one of those things where I don't have all my food packed right now, but I can kind of show you. So in here, I'm gonna have, say I'm going in for four days. So I'm gonna have somewhere around four mountain houses. Um, that's just for dinner stuff. Like I said, I'm gonna do my food a little different this year. So it might not be mountain house. It could be something else. It could be five mountain houses, you know, whatever. So anyway, so in here and I'll have my day bags too. So every day for lunch, I'll have these plastic bags that I come out of here that it'll be whatever I'm having for lunch that day, dinner or breakfast and lunch, etc. cetera. Jet boil, uh, always keep that on with a fuel canister. I always keep that in a dry bag. That's always on the top of my pack. So if I ever, if we ever sit down during the day, I have to just reach in the very top of my pack and I can get it out. Very simple. All right, so going from there, moving on. Say we get at night to where we wanna set up our camp, our tents and stuff like that. Right on the very top of my tent is, or I'm sorry, right on the very top of my pack, first thing in is my tent poles. And this is actually the only thing that you're gonna ever find in my tent in my bag that's in a in a bag all these are just stuffed in this is my tent so i will take that out i will set my tent poles up i like a floor a lot of people do tarps there's so many different ways you can do it uh, this is just the way i do it so put that out first next thing to come out is the second part of my tent rain fly sometimes i won't use this if i know exactly what the weather's going to do i'll just use that and that way i don't have to put this on but you never know at high elevations. I, it's been said it's, you know, supposed to be 80 and sunny and it's pouring down rain and possibly slash snowing. You know, you never know at those elevations that you're gonna hunt. So anyway, always be prepared. This is the rain fly that goes on next. So now I have my tent set up, right? So what am I gonna do next? I'm gonna do my pad, take my pad out, blow my pad up. I'm gonna put that in my tent. What am I gonna do next? I'm going to pull out sleeping bag. This is a chill coot. Okay, so the tent, that's a U, uh, Copper Spur UL2. 
is what my tent is. And that's what I've used for the past quite a few years. Um, my sleeping bag, I changed it. This is last year to a Stone Glacier Chill Coot. Yeah, so the main reason that I like this bag is because I, I researched it a lot and I actually talked to Brady Miller quite a bit. And um, anyway, and he said, Trent, you're gonna love this bag because it's got, it's pretty wide at the top, if you can see. Super wide, it'll fit my body. I like to sleep on my stomach, my side, wherever, wherever my rump rests, that's where I hit. So anyway, this is a 15 degree bag and uh, I do like this bag. So next is going to be pillow. Blow up pillow. This thing has seen some, this is normally green, not green and black, but it's seen a lot of face paint in this time. So anyway, and then this is just a simple, just blow it up, it makes a pillow. So this is my first pillow. So like I said, I pack a little different than the other guys. I like a pillow, I like to have a pillow. And as you guys have seen in my previous stuff, I've got the cheaper cheetah leopard skin pillow as well that Trevor, uh, ever so nicely bought me at one point so and that's it that's all i've got in the bottom of here once i get that in my tent i've got my sleeping bag i've got my pad i've got my pillows i've got all of that stuff i'm pretty much ready to ready to to spend the night right so the rest of the stuff that is in my pack is going to be the stuff my little knickknacks and gadgets so we'll head over to the table here okay so one thing i didn't cover and my pack is going to be the bladder system. So uh, this top, this is pretty cool on our XO uh, 4800s. It's got a special bladder place and it's all waterproof too. So if your bladder busts, it'll actually keep that water in there rather than spreading it to your whole pack, which is I've had in the past. It's a nightmare. So, and it comes with a quick disconnect system like this. So when we get into my my uh, filters, my filtration system and everything, I'll show you how that all works as well. We can actually, let's do that right now. So what's, what's always in my pack is a filtration system. Very, very simple. We use the Sawyer squeeze filters, super, super lightweight. They weigh absolutely nothing. And so far they've been bulletproof for us. So, and super uh, cost effective. What are they, what did you pay? Yeah, so a whole system's like 25, 30 bucks and you can get them at Walmart, REI, a lot of different places. So pretty awesome setup anyway, and I'll show you how I use it. So this is a, what we call a dirty bag. So this is gonna be a bag that gets dirty water and dirty water meaning anything from a creek, a river, a pond. Uh, we've filtered out of mud puddles. We've filtered out of water trucks before. We've filtered out of, you name it, we've done it. So anyway, you fill this bag up, very simple. Screw this on. Squeeze the bag, fresh water comes out. Very simple, very simple. So what we've done to kind of go a little bit easier for us is on our bite valves, we put this extra extra little valve in there. So it's a, di a quick disconnect. And so then we hook the other end to our filters. So as you're hiking along, you get it in your pack and you grab the filter, you don't have to take your whole bladder system and everything out. You just quickly disconnect this Take your filter, connect it in, and start squeezing. And it'll go right into your bladder without having to take it out, without having to do anything. It's a really, really quick, easy system, fast. And say you're chasing a bull and you are going uphill so you know you're gonna get away from water. The cool thing about it is you can just take, you know, these are just one liters here. Take two of these and uh, fill them up, throw them in your pack, throw it on and take off after the elk before it gets dark. Wherever you are at dark, you pull them out and you can still filter the water later. You don't have to do it right then. You can carry it on your person um, and do it later. So awesome system. We use it all the time. So just another small little trick that if you want to, we're one, save weight with a pump filter or anything like that. This is a, this is a route that you can go. Okay, so diving into like my pockets on my pack. These side pockets I usually use for water or fil and filters both is what I do for. And also another thing I don't have, I usually have a kill bottle in here, which is filled with whatever you like to celebrate the kill <laughs> to each his own on that. But I usually, usually have something like that in my pack, guys. Um, okay, so let's get into the side pouch. So I can kind of just go through this real quick. 
Side pouch, I'm usually gonna have a lighter in here. I'm gonna have face paint. Uh, I'm going to have extra calls. So I'll have calls that just in a plastic baggie that uh, my favorite call that I use, I'll have usually up to five of them usually. Um, and they're super, super lightweight. And it's nice to have one if you blow through a call or something like that. And it wears out after time. So the other side, I have a holster. This year I'll pack a gun again. So uh, this is not the greatest holster. It's a cheap, cheap, cheapo junko. Anyway, so this year I'll have some, uh, some cool, some cool holsters. I'll show you those later when I get them. All right, going into the top, guys. First thing in the top, actually this is Trevor's. So anyway, but it's probably something good to have. It's not always in my pack because I could see right off the bat, there's Tylenol PM. Trevor and Cody and a lot of the guys use Tylenol PM like to sleep at night. I usually don't have any trouble at all. I just lay my head down. So uh, there's some super glue in here. There's uh, a toothbrush. Always have a toothbrush on you and toothpaste. It's amazing how just brushing your teeth sometimes can change your whole day. So that's one that I always have with me. Uh, always have mountain money with you, always. This is a must for me. I'm not a real wet wipe guy, so toilet paper. Gotta have it. Charmin, extra soft. Steve, he's, Steve's always got extra. Don't worry, if you run into Steve, you can get extra. Um, big, big thing, a DeLorme. This I use almost every single day. I'm gone for a lot of days in the season. So I use this to text my wife and my family and other, you know, like if Cody's in a different spot, I'll text him where we're gonna meet up or hey, we just killed an elk today, you know, to just, everything's about morale, right? Anything that gets your morale up and keeps you, you know, just keeps you focused and keeps you going through the season is a huge godsend. So uh, must have for me anyway, is uh, inReach. And I use that paired with my phone. So what I can just do is I turn this inReach on and I lay it over here and then I can actually text through my phone and then it sends it to the inReach, which send it to a satellite, which sends it to whoever I'm sending it to, if that made any sense. So inReach, must. So another thing that I don't have in the top of this thing that I normally have would be a battery, like an anchor or some kind of a, a external battery to charge up my inReach and to charge up my cell phone. I looked and I don't have one, so that would be in my pack as well. Sharpener, so this is like the next level work sharp sharpener. It's got the leather on one side, it's got the gritty on one side, it's got the fine on the other side, and it's also got the ceramic. This is like the next level of sharpener as far as you don't need every single one of these, but they are sure nice for any knife that you get dull. So I always have, or, or one, of our, one of ours that we sell on the website, I always have a work sharp sharpener in my pack because as if you've seen any of our stuff, meat care is one of my biggest things that I'm a big stickler on. And I, I always like sharp knives and to deal with meat that, that way. <clears throat> Big thing you gotta have. Everybody has to have a headlamp. Mine is uh, made by Outdoor Gear. Everybody says it's kind of heavy, but at night, everybody's going, wow, Trent, your light is so much brighter than anybody else's and lasts so much longer. Yes, it's got a little bit of weight to it, but that's a one place that I sacrifice in just to have good lighting. So this is what I use. Um, extra wind checker so what you're not seeing right now which i should probably have on is my binocular harness i don't have it on right now um extra wind checkers always good to have if there's one thing that you always have to know it's the wind and obviously everybody usually has one but always have an extra one it doesn't weigh anything and it's something that is very important if you run out um batteries spare batteries either for your headlamp or someone else's headlamp or say like our wireless mics or something of that nature. Anyway, spare batteries always come in handy for some, some somebody needs them usually. And either it's gonna be double A or triple A. So knives, guys, these are, if you've, yeah, watched anything, uh, meat care is kind of big, big, big thing to me. So I really, really take pride in when you harvest an elk, um, it's the utmost care to the animal to actually get the meat from the woods to a cooler uh, to honestly the table. So anyway, meat care is a big, big thing for me. This year, they, I, I prototyped this last year. I think I'm allowed to say that, I hope so. Anyways, this is the Saddle Mountain Skinner. 
and probably my newest favorite knife of Benchmade, honestly. The altitude, I love, don't get me wrong. I love the altitude, um, but this just feels so good in your hands. It's just, a, it's a streamlined finish. It's just, it's a beautiful knife. And they did, they topped this off with the S90V that they had with the altitude. So the blade is so much stronger. S30V is what was normally used for this knife. And um, anyway, with the S90V, you're gonna get that edge retention. It, it, this is my opinion. You're gonna get that edge retention that you can do like an elk and a half almost a whole elk and a half without even having to sharpen it. And then it just takes a few different hits on the sharpener and to just to get the edge back on it. So anyway, love this knife. Uh, I was super, super excited when they finally came out with it this year, which is as of just, just last week. So awesome. Uh, altitude. This one, they discontinued this color. I did like the black, but um, anyway, they discontinued the black. They are in orange, I think, and I'm not sure if they're in a different color or not, but bulletproof knife. This is something I wore around my neck, as you've seen maybe in some of our previous videos. Uh, just super sharp. What I do is I finish this off with just a paracord wrap around it, just so it's a thicker, you know, a little bit better grip. I actually took this one off to clean it because it was getting pretty, pretty nasty. So. Anyway, these are the knives that I carry with me or that will be carried with me all year this year will be these two knives. And um, you can pretty much do anything in the woods as far as you need to with skinning and just whatever, whittling. I love to whittle, do that kind of stuff, anything, anything. These are what it's about. So that, last but not least, um, I was just kind of doing this as I was going along. So you're not, as, as I was not hunting, Hey buddy, as I was not hunting, so I didn't throw this in, but like if I am hunting, I will have my bow as well, which is in the shop. And uh, I would have went through all that. And then these are our game bags that we designed that, um, anyway, they're not yet for sale. We're just getting closer guys, but these are some bad game bags. These things are so wheat. So these will be, we're gonna have a small run just yet to be yet to be announced. So anyway, but I would have uh, I would have five of these. I would have four of these quarter bags and then we're gonna have a regular, just a rectangle bag for spare meat, and neck meat and all that kind of stuff, back straps, stuff like that. So anyway, that's another thing that I would have in my bag, but I don't know. I'm sure there's more stuff that I pack because I usually buy, because I usually pack the kitchen sink with me. Um, I usually have a bunch of cord and stuff, but I, the more and more I pack that stuff around, the more and more I realize I don't use it. So some of the stuff has gone by the wayside, but find out what works for you. Pack how you want to pack, you know, exactly, you know, the weight that you want to pack, but just uh, whatever you do, even if you don't go overnight, just go for a day job. Just go, just bring, uh, bring your knives, bring a source of safety and some game bags and some water and go. You know, just, just whatever you do, go, go do it. Go have an adventure and uh, get out there. There's a ton of places that you can get over the counter tags. If not put in for tags for years, just it's uh, I would encourage anybody just to, just to go experience something new. So that's what's in my pack.